Welcome to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Today I'm so excited to interview 90s dollar cover girl <laughs> and author and podcaster Alison Daddo. Alison burst onto the Australian modelling scene as a 16-year-old, that is so young, Ali, um, in the mid-80s, and her career journey has travelled through roles in education, charities, podcasting and writing. Television soon followed with Channel 9 given, giving Alison her daily afternoon children's show, Guess What?, which enjoyed great success and she was a popular guest host of the iconic Here's Humphrey, which I used to watch, which cemented a place in the hearts of many Australian families. In 1991, Alison married actor Cameron Daddo and the pair immigrated to the USA where Alison's life began a new path. She studied acting and worked on television commercials, was cast in the pilot remake of The Valley of the Dolls and some episodes of comedy television. But this was not Alison's passion, teaching children. And you've got three beautiful children, I know. Taking care of children and indeed having her own children were her heart's desire and she took a break from the entertainment scene. Alison has always been active in charity work, sponsoring children of World Vision for three decades. From 2017 to 2012, she was involved with Gulu, you say how you say Gulu Walk? Gulu Walk, yeah. <laughs> and the Invisible Children, a charity that works with rehabilitating child soldiers in Uganda. Wow. Her first book, Queen Menopause, a friendly, frank, compassionate, and comprehensive companion for any woman experienced menopause, pointing to myself, <laughs> was published in 2022 by Alan and Unwin. She also co-hosts with her husband of 30 years on their hit podcast, Separate Bathrooms, which is fantastic. I've been listening to it, interviewing some of the most interesting couples in Australia. They take a look behind the closed doors of their relationship, Separate Bathrooms, has had over 100,000 downloads in 2021. Alison continues to write articles on parenting, relationships, and the joys of being a woman. Her articles have been published in Kids Spot, Powder Room, Graffiti, and Mamma Mia. Welcome, Ali. Holy moly. That is I the best it was a I've ever had. <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> I know, I'm exhausted. This is the stuff that you do. No wonder you're, you're exhausted by the end of the year, Ali. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. That, that makes me sound, yeah, like I, I well, I kind of have been nonstop this year, but yeah, that was that was a huge enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, and and you've moved from the US, and I have to say before beforehand, it's so great to to chat with you. My husband's like, my husband had a big crush on you when he was young, and he's like, oh, can I come into the interview? I'm like, no, you can't. Thank you very much. But it's it's like every. Every boy wanted to probably uh, date you, and every woman wanted to be like you. Um, so that's a that's a pretty hard role model to sort of obtain, isn't it? Out there, uh, it sure is. It sure is. And I, I I really didn't have any understanding of that at all at the time at all. Um, it wasn't until it, it's honestly it, it hasn't been until we've moved back to Australia that um, I've had you know, person after person come up to me and go, oh my God, you know, I had you on my wall. I had you on the cover of my high school books. I had you, you know, here, there and everywhere. And I was like, really? So it kind of, I mean, it's really lovely. It's taken me um, a little while to wrap my head around it and be completely okay with it, sort of coming out of so many years of being a very, very private quiet person you know in LA and and being away from all of that to sort of coming back to Australia and, and having people come up and recognize me again so yeah it's taken me a minute but I'm, I'm really grateful it's actually a really lovely experience oh good and so and it's interesting because you, you guys were in the US for a long time over 20 years wasn't it yeah 25 years yeah yeah you haven't got the accent Ali Look, I apparently, I don't think I do, but every now and again, someone asks me what part of America I'm from. I'm like, well, I'm from Sydney. I don't know. Uh, but I do every now, I still sometimes say, put your sweater on and I need to fill the car up with gas. Um, oh, yeah. So those, those who haven't quite left 
and uh, left the, left the vocab yet, but they're, they're slowly disappearing. I can I can sort of feel it feel it going away. My kids are very American though; they've all got strong American accents. Wow, wow! Uh, and I'm really excited to to talk to you today. I'm going to talk to you about your amazing book, Menopause, about menopause. Um, and as you know, I'm going through that at the moment, so I'm very very interested in what you're going to say about that. Um, but before we do, you talked about uh, being more private in the US uh, when you were over there. How how have you lived through uh, even in the height of your fame in Australia? Uh, how did you live through these pros and cons, I suppose, of fame? What do you think the pros are or were? And what do you think some of the challenges have been for you to you know live your family out there in the open and be judged and uh, even on your podcast, you're know, getting on social media. Um, so what are the pros and cons for you? Look, the pros are, you know, uh, in, in the heyday of it all, financially, it was amazing. I yeah. was given opportunities to travel to places um, as a young girl um, that I never would have taken myself off to and, and have experiences that were unusual travel experiences as well. It wasn't just like, oh, we went to, you know, Hayman Island. It was like, yeah, we went to Hayman Island and we, and we went, you know, diving and we went to like, um, you know, locations that no one else goes to because you've got to get the right color sand. And so all of that sort of thing really, um, there's a lot of pros and, and, you know, and I met some incredible people. I made some really lovely friends uh, in Australia back in the day that, um, that are, some of them are still my friends to this day too. Um, and, you know, it opens, it does open doors. There's opportunities that do come to you without even sort of trying. Like that's part of that entertainment world where people seek you out to, to do something like the guess what, show I think I had mentioned on an interview somewhere that I love kids and um, always wanted to work with children because I always wanted to be a preschool teacher someone yeah. at channel nine saw that and went do you want to do a kid show I mean that was amazing what an amazing experience so there's all of that um so as far as the flip side of that um you know it is the industry is is a fleeting industry it is um you don't really climb the ranks you can go from a high on one day you're number one on one day and then you're number 369 the next because someone else has replaced you that fast it's not like you're in a job where you do this amount of work and that gets you to there and then you study that and that gets you higher and then you keep going up the up the ladder, so to speak. You, it's not that you just don't know when your day is going to come when no one wants you anymore. Um, yeah. And having both of us, you know, at that time in the industry, of course, my husband still is. I mean, it's just been the most ridiculous roller coaster as far as instability financial wise, instability work wise, um, yeah. and that causes a huge amount of insecurity and. Um, you know, as far as modeling, I talk about this in the book, as you would know, that it's it, it left its scar on me in the sense of um, feeling for so, so long that my voice was unimportant. No one really cared about what I thought, felt um, and who the hell would want to hear from me because uh, they only wanted to see me look pretty. And that was it. Yeah. Um, so, cause I had done it at such an early age and I'd had success at such an early age. Um, and it was just because I was pretty, not because I was smart or funny or nice or had something smart, you know, intelligent to say. So all of that really threw me, um, into this feeling of like very, uh, feeling unworthy in a lot of, in a lot of ways, in the ways that I wanted to feel worthy. Like, you know, being told you're pretty is, that's lovely, but it doesn't, it only takes you so far. If someone tells me, gosh, what you've got to say is so interesting. It really moved me. It helped change my thought. I mean, that's like, that's, that's the win of the day. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's really sort of in a nutshell, the flip side of it. Yeah, and you know when talk, people talk about like, your looks and all that sort of stuff, it's it's because you're judged on that. And as women, 
as oh, you get yeah. older and then you go through menopause like right now I'm going through and I've put on weight and all that sort of stuff I can't imagine having to do that we in the public eye like I just couldn't imagine and and some of the stuff that I've been through in life I've been married for 34 years with my hubby um yeah. And just yeah and just going through all and all the things that you go through in life you know from marriage to kids to you know all that sort of stuff I couldn't imagine going through my life in the public eye when you go through any challenges like that must be really yeah really really challenging for you guys well, look, and I think we've really only had, compared to other people, it's been very minuscule. Like you look at the yeah. Britney Spears and the Justin Bieber's and the Adele's and the those left that level of fame that we never even got close to that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but that kind of scrutiny, I don't even know where you begin with that. Yeah. Where it's just horrifying to me and people say well that's the price you pay you know if you're going to be in that industry and I, I disagree with that yeah. I go no it's the price you pay at all I think it's, it's just you know vultures out to sort of pick apart someone that just happens to be doing a job that they love to do and yeah. um and it made me very very nervous um paparazzi stuff I didn't like it um so being in America where yeah no one knew who the hell I was was yeah. a relief in in a lot of ways and I got to raise my children and um out completely out of the public eye so yeah. I was really grateful plus you know and I grew up thank God in a time where there wasn't um all the social media stuff as well because that's a whole other pressure now um that I'm great I feel pressure now as a 53 year old <laughs> with social media <laughs> <laughs> God knows what it's been like as a 16, 17 year old. So, yeah, it's um, yeah, I I I really feel for those celebrities that can't you know can't wear the wrong coloured shoe un unless they get put out on you know the cover of a magazine and completely torn apart. And I do feel I do feel that the press is harder on women. I mean, Lisa Wilkinson is is just getting torn apart at the moment again. Um, yeah. And I just, I find that they are harder on women. I don't, you don't often see, you know, men out there, oh, he's put on weight and he's got a this and he's got a that and he's worn the same outfit twice, you know. <laughs> you never but, see that. <laughs> I don't see that as much, but God yeah. forbid if a woman does it. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. With 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 the the peaks and troughs, what I've what I've noticed about you and 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 Cameron and your family is that you you're so grounded, and I really find that so beautiful that you guys are grounded so that people can really relate. And I I really feel that on your podcast. One of the things I love about your podcast, separate bathroom. I keep thinking separate bedrooms. I know, everyone <laughs> always does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what I loved about what I love about your podcast is that you you guys are so compassionate and I love the you're grounded you're compassionate and the stories that you talk about uh one of them I was listening to was with um, one of the guys from the Wiggles I think it was who lost their baby um, yeah. And I really related to that because because we've lost a baby too. So, you know, just listening to that and and just the compassion that both you and Cameron had was just so beautiful. Um, so, and, and thinking about that podcast, what 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 prompted you guys to do that? Like, what was your objective? What did you want to get out of that? Yeah, we just really wanted. We, we started it like just before COVID actually, but you know, COVID, it was, it was an unknown word at that point. And um, we had just had like all this, we, you know, we never, we would post anything with the two of us together. Um, people would be like, Oh, I wish I had a marriage like you guys. I only, my marriage was like that. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, well, if only you knew. <laughs> yeah, you, can't, you can't be married for a long time and it's all smooth sailing. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. So <laughs> I was like, okay. And I don't know who said it first, but we were both like, why don't we do a podcast and um, we'll sort of bare our souls and just go, look, we have been through the ringer. Um, we've been nearly divorced. We've come back together. We've hated each other we've loved each other we've done 
years of therapy because yeah. I just want people to feel like, oh, my marriage is normal as well. They're not like this pedestal idea that we've got all of our crap together because we sure as hell don't. Yeah. Um, and and then it just became about, um, you know, really talking about, you know, love and, and what, helps a, what helps a relationship. What can we do to help ourselves? And so then we sort of, we've got, had a lot of therapists on um, who give a lot of ideas. And then we just started talking to couples about their relationship and their longevity, all their, all their traumas and how they've worked through that. Because somewhere someone's going to relate to that, you know. So. Yeah. Really loved it. Really loved doing it. And have you found that therapeutic for you guys? Like, because I, I know some of the challenges we've had in our our life, uh, and as I said, we've been married, we've been together for 34 years. We've had some tragedy and stuff like that. And firstly, I found it really challenging the first time to tell my story because I think that takes a lot of courage to be able to tell your story. But then as I told my story, and one of the things I always remember is, is thinking to myself, if I'm going to tell my story, my story isn't, it's not, a, it's not about me. It's about yeah. me telling my story for a purpose yeah. um, and to help others. And so with you telling your story, it takes a lot of courage. You know, what, you know, did that feel awkward when you first started talking? Um, did you have a good discussion beforehand going, okay, I'm going to share this story. I'm not going to share that one. Or is it just like organic? <laughs> no, we definitely talked before about yeah. where are we going to, how far are we going to tell our stories? Like how in detail and which subjects are completely off the table and not to be brought to the podcast. Yeah. Um, Cause even, you know again speaking of you know press like we'll we'll talk about something that's very intimate and the press will take quotes out and make a make up a story and yeah. you know that's been a bit weird but um and they, they've quoted us so that we are actually it's correct what they're what we're saying that they put it completely out of context yeah. um but yeah look i think the thing that for me is that i'm willing to talk about pretty much anything that i feel is settled within me so yeah. if I am still really upset or really um unstable with something that, I, that I'm really working with I don't really like to bring that to the podcast or to yeah. the public because I feel like I don't want people judging something that I'm that's still really raw and fragile for me so if I'm good with it if I've worked through a lot of it um, then I'm like, yep, let's bring this. We've, we've done the therapy. We've talked this through. We've, we've, uh, gone to the dark places. So I can do this now. We can, we can talk about it. Yeah. I completely relate to that. And I, one of the stories that I have, when, when we lost our, our baby, um, I didn't even, I wasn't even prepared really to tell that story. And I remember I was doing an event and there was a hundred people there and I was running it. And one of the people put their hand up in the in the crowd, and I can't even what um, I can't even remember what she asked, but she asked something, and I thought I've got to serve this woman, and and I, I said my story for the first time, and it was all recorded, and you could see my face like struggling to tell the story because I hadn't actually verbalised it, and I hadn't actually yeah. even said some of that stuff to my own family yet. Mm -hmm. um, but once I did, once I released that, it was like, wow. And I was doing it to serve that woman. Yeah. It was, it's, it was like, okay, I'm okay with that now. <laughs> but for many, many years, I never shared that story. So I get that, you know, that you've got to feel that's the moment for me that I can now share that to help others. Yeah. That makes so much sense. I'm so sorry you lost a little one. Yeah, oh, thank you. It was, I, I've got a 24-year-old now, but, yeah, Raymond would have been, I think he's 28. She would have been 28 now. So, yeah, so, yeah, challenging, but, we, you know, we all learn from all of, all of our challenges. So, so tell me a little bit about menopause <laughs> because you've got an amazing book. Now, I love your title, Queen Menopause, Finding Your Majesty in mayhem i'm trying to find my majesty in mayhem oh i know it takes a lot <laughs> uh, and ali you know i i have 
we just didn't talk about my mum's 90 94 now and uh, and I've got three sisters we never we've never talked about menopause yeah. I even asked after I, I was you know I was going through menopause and I asked mum not just recently mum what's you know how did you go through menopause she goes oh I don't know she did <laughs> I'm like no that doesn't help <laughs> our parents um, generation are uh, barely like barely a blip in in talking about it yeah. um it's just amazing that that's such a common theme that like yeah that sort of 80 to 90 you know all around that age sort of are just like oh did I go through yeah I guess I did I don't really remember but um yeah. But every now and again, someone goes, I really remember my mum. Like, she just became a different person for a while. And then she got better. But, like, so it's the kids who notice, you know, the kids who notice if it's if it's a rough time, they, they do remember something when they think back, go, oh, that would make sense. She was around 50 and she runs screaming from the room really hot and didn't, you know, close the door on us all the time. And, <laughs> you know, so people, the kids might remember it a little bit more than the parents. Yeah. Well, what were some of the symptoms? Like when did when did you start to go, shit, I think some, there's some changes happening now within yeah. you? It was about, um, I think I was around, I think there was things happening even early, earlier than um, 45, but there yeah. was something, something going on um, uh, before. Are you hearing that voice? No. Oh, okay, it's so weird. I'm getting a voice saying something went wrong. Please try again. I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh, God, um, what's happening? Is, is, that a, is that a symptom of menopause? You start hearing voices? Oh, no, I've got to hear voices oh, telling me um, Yeah, so uh, it was my cycle that started going wonky. That was the very first symptom where um, I would have ridiculously heavy periods and yeah. then I'd have nothing for three months and then I'd have periods every two weeks um so that was the first thing and then the sleep started being interrupted even more uh i i the i mean i could hear a, a leaf blow across the yard and be awake yeah um, and then the hot flushes began they began once we'd moved back to um australia that was when i was started to experience that so that they were the beginning signs yeah and uh, are you still getting hot flushes so i need to know because <laughs> driving me quite, my husband's like oh come on like it just happened well for me it's just like this instant thing and even my head gets really hot and yeah. i get sweaty on my upper lip and i and then but i take everything off and then the next minute i'm cold in bed so i've got yeah. <laughs> absolutely absolutely um yes well i'm grateful to say i'm post-menopausal now um, um and i used to get i mean i was getting hot flushes oh, like uh you know 10 a day easily on average easily i might get yeah. one uh one every one not even one a day, maybe like three a week or something like that, and nowhere near where I've got to strip my clothing off because that was me as well where I'd be at the dinner table and I'm like, I, I actually can't sit. I've got to get outside. I've got to take everything off. Um, you know, the kids have come out with an ice pack, <laughs> put it on the back of my neck, um, <laughs> you know, and then, and then, yeah, that's the thing. Like you cool, then you cool off and you're like, right, I've got to put, my, put all my clothes back on again. <laughs> and, you know, myself down um so that I don't get they're nowhere near as volcanic as they were yeah and I didn't even know there was like what do you call it pre there's pre-menopausal pools isn't it yeah perimenopause yeah Peri, that's right yeah. so I don't even know what stage I'm on but um but it, it affected you know you say in your book how you really uh, you went into a deep you know it really affected you um mentally tell me a little bit about that and how you coped with that yeah that was really the most by far the most challenging part I mean yes it was challenging the weight gain was challenging and all the physical stuff was really really hard but I had never um emotionally felt the way I was feeling my I had most like like severe anxiety um and depression that the depression 
gratefully didn't last a super long time, probably a couple of months is what I'm thinking at its worst. Um, And that was just things that I had, uh, the feelings that I I had just never experienced in my life before. And, um, you know, trouble getting out of bed. I didn't feel there was a reason to get out of bed. I didn't feel there was a reason to do anything anymore. I felt like I was worthless and that my life was worthless. Um, I was having all of these sort of suicidal thoughts. Um, And as I say, again, in the book, I had all those thoughts, but at the same time I had like another thought (laughs) that was kind of like looking down on me going, "What, what are you doing? What is happening right now to your mind to you know where are you going with this the, these thoughts um and I'm grateful that I had whatever those thoughts whether that was a you know a spirit guide or another part of my brain or whatever it was but that thought going hang on honey hold up because this is not a rabbit hole you really want to stay down and and and, and follow through with with where you're taking this so um yeah, I slowly was able to pull myself out of that that very dark place, which I'm super grateful for. And I've never, ever felt that way again. Yeah, yeah. And how did you, you know, how did your family go through and, and support you through through that, like hubby and the kids and, you know, did they, how did they support you through it? It was really difficult because I didn't really know what was going on a lot of the time and I couldn't articulate it very well because I wasn't sick. Yeah. Um, I, you know, and I, it was just like I wasn't me and, um, and I was writing the book at the same time. So I, that was helpful in the sense I was learning more and more about menopause and perimenopause and all, that, all the symptoms that come with it. So I kept on going, okay, this is not abnormal. This, is, this can be part of of the experience of menopause. Um, but I just made sure that particularly for the kids that um, it was nothing to, that they knew there was nothing that they were doing that, that was causing me to feel that the way I was. Yeah. Um, it was just what I was going through something and I was going to be okay. Um, yeah. Just to reassure them. And then for Cam, it was, it was for sure hardest on him because I'd become a different wife I uh, you know at that point we were uh, already like not sleeping in the same room because I couldn't sleep I was keeping him awake he would he yeah. would snore and I you know try to roll him over I had to have the covers off while in the middle of winter um, yeah. you know <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, no. Uh, you know so my head was running at a million miles an hour so I couldn't rest um so it's often I'd need to get up and read or write in a journal or do something as well. So, um, yeah, and I just didn't want to particularly be touched. I didn't want, um, I didn't know what I wanted for, for yeah. a long time. So it was really challenging on our marriage and on him for sure. Yeah. So did you, from uh, to, with menopause, did you take anything for it, anything natural, anything that's helped you? Yeah. So, look, I have always been a naturopathic person. So, you know, since I was a young girl, I've always gone naturopathic in my um, in my healing <laughs> modalities. So that's the first place I went to. I went to my gorgeous naturopath um, and she then sent me to this amazing sort of hormone specialist who did all this blood work. So that's the first thing I always tell women. Go get all your bloods done because then you can find out where you're imbalanced. Like, do you need more vitamin D or B or where's your iron levels at? Where's your thyroid at? So once you know all of those, where where you're at those kind of level wise, you can start to build the balance back in your body that way. Yeah, and that's immediately going to help your hormones because if you're out of balance in one place, your hormones are going to be one of the first things that gets affected from what I have learned and understood. So she had me immediately taking all sorts of like, um, uh, you know, vitamin D and all that kind of stuff to, to balance me out. Then my naturopath helped me with my anxiety with something called GABA, G-A-B-A. Okay. Um, yeah, she had me um, on like 
all these amazing tonics to sort of help balance my hormones. Um, she had me on, you know, extra magnesium to help me sleep. So she was sort of dealing with more the mental load for me. Um, she, she was like giving me mantras to say and, um, you know, things to visualize at night when I couldn't sleep. And, uh, so that's, that's the way I went. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that's what worked for me. It's, it's the, I think it's a longer it's a longer way to get to the end result is going that way for sure. Where yeah. I know and spoke to so many women that did HRT and felt better in a week. Right. So you know, that's something that I think is really important to know. And it's a great, great tool is HRT. It just, you just need to feel right with it. That's all, that's all that matters. And, you know, I just, I always <clears throat> say that because I don't want anyone thinking that I am anti-HRT I'm actually very pro-HRT because of how much it's helped women um, across the world really Um, and they've and they keep on working on it as well and making it better and better HRT so there's a lot of there's a lot of different and then there's plant-based hormone replacement therapy as well Um, and I don't you know I'm no doctor so I don't know enough about it to really speak properly but there's some amazing doctors doing amazing things um, uh, thank God, uh, and creating some great websites and information for women to to learn more about it. Yeah, and I'm so I'm someone that I don't know. I've I've been brought up. I don't even take a pan at all unless I've got a really <laughs> really bad header, right? So yes. for me, it's it's always natural all the way. It's and and I'm I'm probably someone like I haven't even gone to the doctors about it or a natural I haven't just my husband kept going maybe you should just go to someone and I think naturopath is more my journey of where I would go um but there's some good things about menopause as well because and I don't know if you've got some some good things to share but one of my things is that because I had endometriosis yes okay so um and I've had that since I actually got it when my son Dylan is 24 now was born so because he had a, I had an emergency oh. season and so okay. I don't know what happens and tissues or whatever was yeah. transferred when I had my season and I got endometriosis and I've had it like really badly for 24 yeah, yeah. years yeah. Um, and I remember that and I haven't taken anything for it for 24 years um, and I remember the doctor saying to me once you go through menopause you it will probably fix endometriosis. I'm thinking, really? And it has. <laughs> so I was hoping you were going to say, yeah. It has. I mean, and so I keep saying to my husband, I'll take that hot blush any day. I'll take it any day. Because <laughs> the endometriosis is gone. It's so painful. Yeah. It's so painful to know that that's heading your way every month. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, holy cow i i grateful to say that i did not have it i I I certainly had some painful periods but um i have friends of mine that had it and you know they were out for two days it was like couldn't get out of bed just in so much pain um and that is one of the benefits it doesn't it's not it's not guaranteed that you will it'll cure it but there's a it's often the case that um endometriosis is cured by menopause which i'm like yay that is such a nice thing to hear that all that suffering you know that finally there's there's a there's something that it does give us but it you know i think the thing that i always talk about um and and again having spoken to women who are postmenopausal is this there is so much of a sense of freedom that women are experiencing postmenopausal, not only because you are no longer tied to knowing once a month you, you're getting a period. Yeah. You know, you now, you know, it you no longer can a lot of women feel great that they no longer can get pregnant. They don't have to worry about that anymore. So they feel a sense yeah. of freedom in that in that way as well. Um but what changed for me was, is, you know, how I looked at myself um, physically and emotionally. It was like, when am I going to stop judging myself? When am I going to, to be kinder to myself? You know, yeah. I, I, at 
war with my body for so long and then menopause perimenopause came came along and I put on a ton of weight I felt like I aged overnight went through all the emotions that that sort of caused and then went you know what when am I gonna when am I gonna start liking myself and being a little kinder you know yeah. I've been so mean my whole life and society tells us that aging is crap and aging is a disease and I was like you know what fuck that yeah I, I'm actually I'm actually gonna go against that I'm actually yeah. gonna go against that and go you know what yeah, I've got a, I've got a big belly now. I'm four sizes bigger, but my body works, and that's yeah. what I'm going to go off of. I'm going to love that. I'm going to love the fact that my body works, yeah. um, and that I've just felt like I could actually say that and mean it for the first time. I could actually take the care with my body that it actually had been crying out for for so long to actually go you know, go to the doctor, go get a massage, go, go um, do the things that you need, take the time for your mental health. But I never did because, you know, as, as mums and women, we're, we're, we're so driven in our way of thinking that it's all about sacrifice. You know, that's what we should be doing. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and again, that, that thing that we do so well from the age of 13, 14, your first period, you just get on with stuff. You just get on, it really hurts, but you keep going. And yeah. I was like, you know what? Menopause really hurts, but I'm not going to keep going. I'm actually going to stop and go, what can I do? What can I do that's acting and it really feel good to myself? So that was, that's was that been a huge, huge, huge turnaround for me. Um, and just feeling like now I don't have any problem, you know, because I, I was such a, a, a dyed-in-the-wall people pleaser being able to go, actually, no, I don't want to do that. And um, I can't come. Thanks for asking, but I can't come. Or, or you know, yes to things that I never would have said yes to. Yeah, I'll try that. Yeah, why not? You know, um, so th that's just that whole attitude that pretty much across the board, um, most women have landed in um, post-menopause. Everyone I've spoken to um has felt that way about their lives and have felt so much like this energy surge and this ability to sort of just go, sure, let's try it. Why not? And I love that. I think that's such uh, an exciting message and such a good message to get out to women and to know that there's so much more life ahead than, um, than we think there is when we, when we hit that point in our lives where our body changes and, you know, you forget what your child's name is. Well, that just ties in beautifully with, I mean, my, my podcast is called Be Your Own Best Coach. Mm -hmm. And I often say to my clients that the, the, the person that you look in the mirror, like you're the best coach you can ever, ever get is the one that you look in at the mirror every single day because you're always communicating to yourself. You always got this self-talk about looking at yourself or, or any, any self-talk about, you know, how are you encouraging yourself? Are you empowering yourself or are we speaking to us like, you know, we would never speak to our best friend like that. So, yeah. um, you know, I think that those sort of strategies, I think, are really important um, to be our own best coach. And and being a mum, as you and I both are, I think it's so important because our kids, whether we we think they see it or not, they they learn from us and they learn how we can empower ourselves. And or if we have this negative self talk, even if it's in our head, but most of the time it will come out like, oh, it's my bum look a bit big, you know. <laughs> I haven't got any daughters. But I know that I've said that, and you know, stuff like that. And it's like, well, just stop that. Who cares about your yeah. bum, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's about how we can be the best version of ourselves. And I think that's uh, a beautiful journey that comes out the end of menopause. So I'm looking forward to having more of that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, sure, you, you have to sort of, you have to kind of choose that path as well. Like it doesn't just magically delicious land on your plate, but, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's so much more available to you. Um, yeah. And it's, it's what we need. It's what we need is when we don't need to feel like washed up, tired crones at the end of our life. We need to feel like, 
we're vibrant and smart and wise and have so much to share, you know, and we do. We really, really do. Yeah. So what what is your what where do you, what's your legacy, I suppose? What do you want to leave in this world? What's what's your purpose? Mm, gosh. I am um I do like adore to help people. I've always been in, involved in charities um, since I was young um, and I love to see that I have somehow made a difference in someone's life and um, I think that's been by far the best thing about writing this book and the response to the, the book that honestly took me by surprise that I just wrote I wrote my story because I really didn't want other women to go through perimenopause and menopause not knowing and feeling alone like I did. And um, just to feel like you are part of the collective and not alone and your experience is not some standalone horrible weird thing that there's so many other women out there experiencing it and so many other women um, getting through it and and to normalize that and to know that you know you've got so much more ahead of you so yeah I just I just want women women especially I find I just want them to feel better about themselves you know yeah we're just taught we're taught the opposite in so many ways in so many little ways that um it's hard to fight against what society wants to tell us so yeah yeah Absolutely. So, Ali, how can they grab your book? How can people, listeners, grab your book? I'm imagining that it's all in the best bookstores and online. It is. It is. It's yeah. been hard, apparently, to find in bookstores, I keep on hearing, because it's, uh-huh. um, it's been sold out, which is kind of a good and a bad yeah. thing. Um, but I know, like, the big the big shops, the Dimmix has it. Um, but if not, uh, Booktopia online has it. Um yeah, so just if you just Google Queen Menopause, it should come up somewhere. <laughs> so I encourage listeners to buy the book. Um, so it's Queen Menopause, Finding Your Majesty in the Mayhem by Ali Dado, Alison Dado, and uh, and also to listen to your amazing podcast, Separate bedro- Bathrooms. They're all saying bedrooms. That's all right. <laughs> bathrooms. Um, I think that is fantastic. You go through all different subjects. Uh, and I think it's really interesting. And you've got a bit of a combination of having guests and then you and, and Cameron talking about different things and similar to what I do. So I really love yeah. that combination too, Ali. I love when you have a guest and then you guys will just have your own thing that you're going to be talking about. So I really love that combination. So uh, yeah. it's been such a pleasure talking to you, Ali. I've got I've got 10 fun questions to leave with. Um, yeah. Rapid fire questions. Are you ready? Okay, these are fun. Okay, the best best piece of advice you've been given. Oh, oh gosh, best piece of advice is um, um, when you create something, don't follow it around like it's your child. Create something and put it out into the world and let it go. Beautiful. I love that. I'm gonna I'm gonna remember that one. Uh, what is your superpower? I'm amazing at finding lost things. Like oh. it is a serious superpower. I am amazing. Like everyone knows it. <laughs> because my, you know what my son says to me? He says, mom, I'm sure you've got a secret portal somewhere because someone will say, I can't find it. And I'll go, da, 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 here it is. <laughs> I know. It's something us mums do. We just know. It's like I have a look at the bottom of your laundry basket. Is it there? Oh my yeah. God, Mama was there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but one of the other superpowers I think you've got, well, I know that you've got is kindness. So I just oh. wanted to mention that. I think you're very kind. Um, who would play you in a movie? Well, I always say this one because I used to get, I used to, people used to say I looked like her. And I think we're a good age now, Michelle Pfeiffer. Ah, yes. She's beautiful, isn't she? Uh, what, what, what's one thing on your bucket list? Um, I really want to go to the Amalfi Coast in Italy. Beautiful. I love Italy. Gorgeous. Um, what's a favourite thing you like to cook or eat or both? 
Ooh, um, well, I mean, I'm a big, I'm, I'm a big sort of roast girl. I love roast with all the mm. pumpkin and potatoes and salad and trimmings and stuff like that. I love cooking. Now, I love, I actually love baking, um, but I don't eat desserts really much anymore. Mm. But I do love uh, baking cakes and stuff. I used to do that a lot. So. Um, I'm completely obsessed with pumpkin at the moment. I don't know why, but it's just I'm in love with pumpkin. <laughs> so I love to eat it, cook it, whatever. If, if it's pumpkin, I'm there for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where is your favourite holiday destination? I think, uh, gosh, it's hard to say because we've had our best holidays in Hawaii as a family, like across the board. We've been there three or four times. Every time has been absolutely incredible so um pro yeah I mean, I'm, I'll stick with Hawaii that's yeah. on my back at least that's one place I haven't mm -hmm. been so uh what's your best beauty tip sleep sleep ah good one I'm, I'm a good sleeper so I'm very fortunate uh what would your yeah. what would you tell your 17 year old self oh gosh it's the first thing I thought of <laughs> which is a weird one is um, get a financial advisor <laughs> and, and be smart with your money and, um, you know, put, put things away, put money away um, and just be kinder to yourself. Yeah. Beautiful. I think I need all of those. Um, that mean, I should be telling myself that too. So what you're talking to me, <laughs> what is uh, something that most people don't know about you? Hmm. that oh maybe they don't know this actually that I have been for the longest time my grandmother was obsessed with sharks yes. and she uh she was I used to spend all my time with her and, and her and my grandfather and so from a young age I have been obsessed with sharks if there's a shark documentary I will watch it I will read books on them I just adore sharks terrified of them too but I love them <laughs> I still sometimes go into the water and the beach and think I just hear that jaws d -d 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 -d. <laughs> that's enough for me <laughs> I know. I know. jaws is a lot of damage <laughs> Um, and the last thing, if you could change one thing in the world, what would it be? Cruelty. Just cruelty. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Ali. It's been such a pleasure having you. And as a, I could talk to you for hours because there's so many questions I could ask you, but I'm really, you know, I'm really blessed to have you on the show and that you've given your time to the viewers. And I know there's lots of great stuff that you've shared today that's going to help others. So thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for having me. It was really lovely talking with you too, Janelle. Thanks, Ellie.